Hello, I'm Gary Zukav. And I'm Linda Francis. And we're here to share some thoughts and experiences about the source of wonder. For us, everything is a source of wonder. And we want to share with you some of the ways that we have experienced our divine spark, what it is, what it feels like to us, and how we've come to love it and share it. So um, I want to speak first about experiences that I had when I was really young. So when I was really young, I had experiences that I didn't understand. I knew they were good. I knew they were loving, but I, I didn't understand what they were. And I also knew not to say anything to anyone. So let's fast forward a number of years. And I read Gary's first book, The Dancing Wooly Masters. And in that book, I realized that quantum physicists were talking about the things that I knew that were true inside of me that were all connected. And I was just thrilled about that, to know that there were other people in the world that knew those things that I knew inside of me were true. So I want to move a little further down my path and uh, I um, had an experience of the divine spark coming alive in me, but it didn't happen by having this really loving experience to begin with. It actually happened because I had a very painful experience. And that painful experience, uh, I felt like I was being betrayed and violated. That was what parts of me felt. But I knew that I'd had that happen earlier in my life and I knew that I didn't want to do what I had done before. So this time, I used it as an opportunity to learn about myself. And so I was willing to feel whatever pain there was associated with this because it felt very painful and I felt it, but I wasn't, I was feeling it because I really wanted to change uh, myself. I didn't want to blame the other person like I had done many years before. So I felt the pain. I call it the pain of powerlessness because it was so excruciating and painful, but I knew why I was feeling it because I didn't want this part of me to control me again anymore that felt violated and betrayed or who had done that to other people. That's what really shocked me. I realized that it was telling me about myself, this experience. And when I felt that and I just kept feeling it because I didn't want to, I wanted to change, something began to happen. And I started feeling something very, I can maybe describe it as warm inside of me. And I didn't know until later that this, I felt this divine spark was being ignited. It was very small, but I felt, I really felt it. And I knew something very big had happened. And I was so excited. And then after, and, and how I knew that it was the divine spark and how I knew that I had changed is because I saw that I really loved myself. Even if I had all those parts of me inside of me, I still loved who I was. And I had no feeling of anger or uh, bitterness toward the person who I would have blamed before. In fact, I only felt real love for that person. I didn't want to be around them anymore because I knew they didn't understand this, but, it, but I felt so loving. So then what happened is I began to, everything that happened after that, in, it informed my life because I knew that I wanted to live in a way that I always learned about myself. And I was so excited about that. I met Gary, we began to co-create together. We um, began to learn more and more. So that divine spark began to get bigger and bigger in me. And um, I knew I was giving my gifts and I was so excited about that. So I just wanted to share that because it didn't come in a really loving or uh, uh, wonderful way. It, it, it came through feeling the painful sensations that I felt and then moving through that and allowing that divine spark to ignite in me. So I'm hoping this is helpful to all of you. Well, I'm discovering that divine spark um, 
is there. It's in everyone. It's in me. Whether I see it or not, whether I know it or not, whether I even believe in it or not, I am the divine spark. But what I'm talking about when I say divine spark, as I understand it from Asami and uh, Hiru and Irvin, is a recognition of something more than the five senses can provide. A recognition that I am more than a body and a mind. And actual experience of that actual experience of creativity that isn't limited to my intellect and isn't limited to my experience. And once I saw that, I began to see that it's always been the case. So I'll tell you a time that I saw it and I recognized it, and it was really in a way that I couldn't not see it. I was writing a book on physics after being invited to the Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory in Berkeley, California, to meet with a group of physicists on a Friday afternoon. And they were discussing things at that meeting that just astounded me. The question in particular that they were discussing is, are we creating the reality that we're experimenting with? Now, I talked about things like that in coffee shops, but these were renowned theoretical physicists. So I went home and I was so excited, but I could not explain what excited me so much. So I decided to look into it and they were gracious enough, this group of physicists, to uh, allow me to come back again and again, and I did. And after a while, I decided that I wanted to share what I was learning from them in our discussions about theoretical physics. I was reading books. They agreed, by the way. And when I asked for their help, all but one agreed to help me. So I began to write. And as I wrote this book, which became The Dancing Wu Li Masters, an overview of the new physics, I started with an outline for each chapter that I anticipated writing. But as soon as I started writing the first chapter, I threw the outline away because my energy went somewhere else. The outline went over here and the energy went over there. So I had a choice to make, but it was not a choice that was difficult. I went over there with the energy and I did that from the beginning to the end of the book. After six chapters, which was about a half a year, I realized that all the chapters were coming together, were fitting together as though I had planned it that way. But I hadn't because I had discarded all of my outlines. So how was that happening? How could that possibly have been happening? And that's when I began to realize that I wasn't writing this book alone, that I was co-creating it. And now, please don't mistake me. I'm not saying that I channeled the book or that I'm a channel. That's not the case. I had to work and do the things that I'm doing and that I was doing. But what I am saying is that I realize that it's not possible to be alone. It's not possible for anyone to be alone. And therefore, it's not possible to create alone. So all creation is co-creation. It's creation with you and your non-physical guides and teachers. The ancient Greeks called these the muses, but now we're becoming multi-sensory. We're in a great period of consciousness transformation, and we're beginning to see far beyond, in addition to the five senses. And we see that our, our divine spark when it comes to creativity is co-creativity. I went on to uh, finish, or I should say, we went on to finish, <laughs> whoever my guides and teachers were, the Dancing Wu Li Masters. It was the first book I'd ever written and the first interest I'd ever taken in physics. And it won the American Book Award for Science and was uh, featured in a large review, laudatory review in the New York Times. And that's how I realized that I could share some things that were important to me through writing. But important how? Important through what I could think about? Only if what I was thinking about came from the heart. Only if I could feel that energy, that that was so solid and grounded and welcoming and, and fulfilling to me. That's when I recognize the divine spark as it comes in co-creativity. If it's not that, then I'm just writing from my thoughts, from my intellect, and afterwards when I go back and I read it, it's not very good and I throw it away. But when I 
when I'm writing from that place and I go back and I read it, uh, then uh, sometimes it makes me cry. Always I want to read it again and again. And it, it's, I know it's good. It fulfills me. And it's not good because it pleases a part of me that wants to do something good or write something good. It's good because it is good, because it pleases me. And so that's what I've been doing ever since. The latest book I've written also comes in this way. It's called Universal Human. It'll be published in 2021. And I've been working on it for 30 years. And I realize now that I've been working on it and the book's been working on me. <laughs> We've both been expanding and growing. I'm not finished yet and neither is it, but it's going to be published. So those are some examples of Divine Spark. There are many, many more. I think that's so beautiful, beloved. I'm so glad you shared that again. I, and I'm really looking forward to sharing all of this with all of you. So thank you, Masami Sayonji. Thank you, Hiro Sayonji. Thank you, Urban Laszlo, for the Fuji Declaration. Thank the first, you all. Thank you all. Sayonara.